Good morning, Jesus Image family. I'd like to welcome you all to church today. I'd like to welcome our online viewers. Thank you guys for joining us this morning. Can we close our eyes and focus our attention upon the Lord? And specifically, can we see Him on the cross this morning? As we give our thoughts and our focus to Him, and as we read this scripture from Isaiah 53, focus our attention on the bloody, the beaten, the bruised one upon the cross. But He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we, we could be made whole. He was whipped so that we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a, sla a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. And no one cared that he died without descendants or that he was struck down and cut short. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. So Jesus, may we see you rightly today. Would we see you upon the cross and realize that it was my sin, it was our sin that put you upon that cross? And would we come and would we minister to the broken and bruised one this morning? May we lay aside every care of this world, Jesus, and may we look fully into your eyes and see the love of the Father that burned on the eyes through Jesus upon the cross. Thank you that we will see you, not today, as something that we can get, but as the one that we can give everything to because you first gave everything to us.
Jesus Christ.
can we just give a mighty shout to Jesus?
Would everyone just lift their hands to the Lord, close your eyes. And I felt this morning as I was praying before service that we were to go above and beyond at verbalizing our thanksgiving to the Lord. So I wanted to fill this whole house with thanksgiving. So begin to tell the Lord what you're thankful for. Let it come out of your mouth. Take the next minute. Nothing is too small, nothing too big. Then choir, can you just sing in the spirit softly behind us? Oh, just let gratitude pour out. Let's enter his gates this morning with thanksgiving.
ministering to the Lord behind me softly in, in the spirit. Keep ministering to the Lord choir. Holy Father, we're thankful this morning for your precious blood, the blood of your Son. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit among us. Keep blessing the Lord, church. Thank you for your word that you honor above your own name. Thank you for your promise to keep us, to hold us, to heal us. Thank you, precious Lord, for your mercy toward us all. Anybody thankful for the mercy of God this morning? Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Just keep blessing him, church. Thank you, Holy Lord, for your kindness. Thank you for this building, Lord. Thank you that we get to gather this morning and, and ascend the hill of the Lord together. Wonderful Jesus, thank you for saving us. Thank you for forgiving our sin. Thank you for washing us in the precious blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord, that you never leave us. You never forsake us. You are with us even unto the end of the age. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your unending love. Thank you for our families, our spouses, our children. Thank you, Lord, for this church and what you're doing among us. We give you all the glory, all the glory. It's, for the Lord has done the work. It's marvelous in our eyes. Jesus, we give you all honor, all praise, all majesty, all dominion belongs to you forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for your wonder, Lord. You said we did not choose you, you chose us. What mercy, what kindness. Church, I'd love for you all to join hands, just not across the aisles. And as I was uh, down in my seat ministering to the Lord, I felt in my heart that we were to bring our needs to the Lord and agree with one another. So right now, just, just begin to pray God's best over that person to your right and left. And do it out loud. Make sure, make sure it's going to be heard. Go ahead. Go ahead.
I want you now to begin praying for that person's health, spirit, soul, and body. Go ahead. I feel a real precious healing flow right now. And if you're in need of a healing in your body and your mind, just ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Just receive right here in His presence. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Hear your people, Lord. It's by your stripes we are healed, Father. May all pain leave. May heaviness of heart lift. May troubled minds be made calm and peaceful. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. May the healing power of Jesus in the most blessed and holy way flow through this building. Heal your inheritance, Holy Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can stop praying there. Just keep playing behind me, team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ludi, can you bring that pad down just a little? Just, just a little bit. Just, just stay right here, guys, in our hearts. How many of you, as you were praying, or are you receiving prayer, you felt... The Lord's healing power come on you. Your body feel, you feel like the Lord has touched you this morning already. Would you just lift your hands if you feel that? Yeah, one in the back there, one here. Yeah. Many up top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One there, one there. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Let's just, let's just give our attention to the Lord. This is really uh, never happened in this way during this prayer time. But I do feel the love of Jesus, his healing love. Precious Father, you care about our bodies. You are the Lord who heals us. Thank you, Lord, for doing a deep work this morning. Hallelujah. Heal every broken heart. All that is broken, heal it, Lord. Heal broken families here. Marriages on the verge of divorce. Do what only you can do here, Lord. is not the time to shame you if you're struggling in your marriage or family it's it's not that's not our heart in the least but it's also not the time for you to hide uh, in the presence of God it's time for you to reach out and touch the hem of his garment so I out of respect and honor for people could we all just close our eyes and bow our heads and if your marriage is in emergency mode with every head bowed and eye closed I just want you to lift your hand to heaven right now look how many okay you can put that down I don't certainly my heart is not to expose now let's pray church the family the marriage is a testimony of Christ Jesus and his church according to Ephesians 5 now father in heaven here we are, Lord, our hands are lifted in your wonderful presence. And many have come in with brokenness in their marriages and in their bodies and in their minds. But now we ask you, Lord, to heal those marriages. It takes one shift in faith and perspective, one moment of true forgiveness. 
Let everyone who feels like giving up find hope. Hope in your word, hope in your ability, hope in your goodness. And remove the fear from the children who feel like they're losing everything. Grant the power, the grace, I should say, grant the grace and the revelation of forgiveness this morning and covenant. Heal these marriages, Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. What a wonderful Lord. How loving he is. And I was there praying with Chloe and Jimmy, and I instantly felt his wonderful heart to heal his people. Isn't Jesus so loving? Can we offer him a sacrificial praise this morning? Come on, from the depths of our being. Bless him, your name. Come on, bless his name, bless his name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, we can do better. Pour it out. Blessed be your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you let the worship team know you're thankful for their... Yeah. Why don't you love on two or, th two or three? Three is the max. Two or three people. You can go back to your seats. Welcome. God bless you. <laughs>
uh, actually it was a couple of months ago when we were doing the Build His House campaign, uh, Alicia and I were pregnant with our, our third baby and it feels like we've been pregnant for three years. And so um, she was pregnant, I wasn't pregnant, she was pregnant. I really didn't, yeah, um, I didn't do anything with that. So, um, <laughs> and uh, thank you, Pastor Michael. And so she, we were in this moment where, you know, medical bills are due and all this stuff is going on. And so we've been always just faithful with our tithes and trying to be generous with our offering. And there's a, there's a, I think it was in November, Pastor Michael, we did the Build His House campaign. And so we were just praying about, Lord, what would you have us give? And we were in this season again where all these bills are due and these added expenses. And, and the Lord, we were sitting here on the front row and Pastor Michael said, I want you to pray and I want you to ask the Lord what you should give for the Build His House campaign. And we prayed. And immediately the Lord gave me a number. And have you ever had those moments where the Lord gives you a number and you start to immediately sweat and you start to get worried about how that's gonna work and how that's gonna happen? And uh, I looked over Alicia and I was praying that Alicia would be like, no, that's crazy. I'm looking for unity in this thing. And so I leaned over to her and I, I whispered the number and she's like, yeah, I think that's what we should give. And I was like, oh man, come on, Lord. And so I sit down and, I, and I, we write out this number and, and, and we go to give it and we give it to the Lord. And we're, we're literally thinking, I'm like, Lord, we don't have the means to pay for this. And it wasn't like it was this crazy amount, but in that season that we were in, it, it, we just didn't have it. And we were believing in faith. Like, Lord, you see our desire to be generous to you, to be faithful to you, and to obey you. And so we went and we gave. And literally within that week, double that amount that we committed to give to the Builders' House campaign randomly came in from a bunch of different ways to us. And I'm not saying this in a way of like, when you give, you're gonna immediately get all of these things. No, no, no. I'm saying that when you trust the Lord, when you are faithful to his promises and you are faithful to trust him and to take him at his worth, his word, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and not worrying about all these other temporal things, the Lord moves and the Lord blesses. It's a joy and it's an honor to fix our hearts on the eternal and not the temporal. And so I would encourage you today to trust the Lord, to seek first his kingdom, to trust him and to put him first in your finances. Be faithful with the tithe. Be faithful if the Lord tells you to give above and beyond the tithe in an offering. And I promise every need will be met because we serve a good, faithful father who gives. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you are good, that you are faithful. Lord, I pray as Psalm 17 says, keep us the apple of your eye. Hide us in the shelter of your wings. Lord, I pray over your people today, Lord, that as they serve you and as they are faithful to honor your word when it comes to our tithes, when it comes to our offering, when it comes to our finances, Lord, I pray that you would bless them. Meet every single need, just as Pastor Michael prayed earlier. Meet every need today. Thank you, Lord, that you gave first to us and that it's our joy and it's our honor to be able to give in turn to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, amen, amen. Listen, if you're here in the room and you wanna give, uh, all you have to do is lift up a hand. Our ushers will be coming by with an envelope and then they're gonna have the buckets at the front that you can drop that envelope in. If you're watching online, there should be a text to give option right there on the screens, as well as here in the room, you can follow the QR code or the text to give option. And then we'll be right back in just a moment.
dedicate a few babies this morning. So can we welcome them, please? David, it's all yours. Come on, let them know you love them, would you please? Esther, I feel like you were born to minister to kids. Look, look how she, doesn't she look like, if you looked up children's director, wouldn't her picture be next to the definition? Wow. All right, David. Well, first we get the honor of dedicating the Chevalier family, baby, Mar <laughs> baby Mariah and Sela to the Lord. Oh, I'm doing both. Doing both. All right, let's stretch our hands. How many of you know the Lord hears our prayer? Oh, hallelujah. What's, what's her name? Selah. Selah, that's easy. I read about her today in the book of Psalms. It's, okay, it's just oil. She's like, what do you have? <laughs> All right, church, just begin praying. Lord, thank you for Selah. Thank you for your touch, Lord. Thank you for the presence of your spirit that will clothe her and keep her all her days. That you'd keep her close to your heart. That she'd be a woman who loves your presence and your voice, your holy word. And that she would be a mother and wife, Lord, who is used of God to fill her home with the very presence of the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we the church, we dedicate her to you and your cause, to you and your kingdom, all her days. And we plead your precious blood in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Next, baby Mariah. How did she spell that? M O. M O. Wow, I knew it. Wow. What a beautiful name. Oh, my word. Look, can you all get in that? <laughs> yeah. Daniel Williams is freaking her out. That's why she's making that look. Lord, thank you for Mariah. The first place mention, worship is mentioned, Lord, on the hill of the Lord, offering you what is precious. Clothe her with the precious anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let her life be a life of worship. Let her life be a life of sacrifice. Where even what you give us is offered back to you again and again, like Isaac on Mount Moriah. And Lord, as you said that day on that mountain, the Lord will provide a lamb. May her voice in life declare yes. that Jesus is the Lamb of God. Yes. We dedicate her to you and your holy cause, to you and your holy gospel, and your kingdom, in Jesus' precious and glorious name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord praise. They're getting their first Bibles. They can't read them yet, but Ray, it's a version you'll be able to read very easily. That's perfect. Praise God. <laughs> Next, we have the Villa family, and we're dedicating baby Selah to the Lord. Baby Selah. <laughs> I think the Lord's telling us all to take a pause. Baby Selah. Would you stretch your hands, church? Holy Father, thank you for Selah. May, your life, may her life be a testimony of you. May she live by the river. May she live a life of fruitfulness. May she live a life in your anointing. May she know you all her days and never know a day outside the fold. And clothe her with the presence of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, Lord, we dedicate her to you, your care, your hands. You are the good shepherd in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. 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 And last but not least, we have the Toronto family, and they're dedicating their son, Jaira, to the Lord today. <laughs> A little oily, huh? <laughs> Sorry, I was busy. What? What's his name? Jaira Toronto. Jaira? Yeah. Whoa. You can't name your kid Chuck anymore, can you? It's just not holy enough. I'm so proud of all of you. Jaira, stretch your hands, church. Lord, may the provision of the Holy Spirit rest upon Jaira all his days. 
May you be his food, Jesus, his drink, his life, his love, the fountain in his heart, the strength and rock of his life. Now, Lord, we dedicate Jaira to you, precious Lord Jesus, to you and all your causes, the kingdom of God and obedience. May you serve the Lord and never know a day of darkness. In Jesus' name, anoint him with your precious spirit and bless this family. Amen. 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 Oh, we've got one more. All right, come on up. One more, It's amazing. Hey. Who do we got here? Baby Elijah is being dedicated to the Lord. Elijah. Eli Elijah. Eli Elijah. Eli Elijah. Holy Father, take this precious life. Take Eli Elijah and let him know you and walk with you. May the angels of heaven surround him. Keep him, Lord, as the apple of your eye and use his life for your namesake. We dedicate him to you and your precious kingdom and gospel. Good shepherd, lead him all his days in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord all the praise. Bless y'all. Come on, let them know you love them. You see him? <laughs> Come on, how beautiful is that? Just one more time, let them know you love them. Thank you. What an honor. All right, you can be seated. Thank you, Ludi. It's going to be a great day. And additionally, it's Master Sunday. That's why I'm wearing a green shirt. Pretty green. Um, one more thing. Our missions teams just got back last night. And I think we're going to take... Um, but don't we have two testimonies as well? Two testimonies and a video. So who's giving the testimony? Are they here? All right, well, come on up. Come on. Let's grab our mic. So we've got one more. There they go. So give them your name and your year, and uh, we're waiting here. Yeah, you don't want to miss the rapture. All right. All right, so give them your name, your year, and at school, and then where you went. And okay. Tell them what the Lord did. Okay, so my name is Chelsea. Um, I am a second year, and I had the honor and the privilege to go to Germany. And um, honestly, I feel like words may be inadequate for all that the Lord did. Not just in me, but in our team. Um, my life has been completely changed completely wow. marked even my family. They were in tears. They said, you don't look like the same person. We got to go. It was an honor to serve the sisters. We got to be there on the property with them and their lives and the property, every single part of it. It just reflects Jesus, testifies of Jesus. And um, my heart honestly has never been so tender to the Lord after being there. And we've heard you say that so many times. They tell us, they say, find the love of Jesus and love him back. We went there to serve them. But they so outserved us so beautifully in the way that they love Jesus, um, of how they poured into us as we were just serving. And we got to see their lives um, just behind the scenes, how, how they love him and worship him in all that they do. Um, I'm a wife and a mom, and I feel like where the Lord had me to serve there has impacted me. Um, I, I serve here at church, and there's a facet of the Lord you get to see in serving because he came to serve uh, and not to be served, but um, seeing it in everyday life, the way that they do um, everything in worship. Like, I, I will never clean my house the same again or do the dishes the same again. Um, my heart's just so tender. My daughter this morning just came out. She's like, Mom, why are you crying right now when you're doing everything? And I was like... 
baby, I'm just experiencing the Lord. I'm encountering the Lord just in everything that I'm doing right now. And I just wanna stay in this place. Um, and so we're so grateful to be able to go um, and just for everything that they did, well, our lives will never be the same well, I'm again. I'm so glad you guys went. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. My word. Wow. Could you give your name and your year? Sure. Yeah, so uh, my name is David. I'm a first year. And we Where had- Where are you from, David? So I'm from Orlando, Florida. Oh, wow. Yeah, born okay. and raised here. Um, so we had the privilege of going to California. And um, so before, before going to California, I had a dream. And in the dream, I remember uh, I was crying and I was holding my heart. And I was praying for compassion uh, for lost souls in the dream. And at a distance, I saw uh, pretty much lost souls coming toward me. And then I woke up from my dream and I remember uh, just feeling the fear of the Lord uh, for the lost. And wow. I remember hearing the Holy Spirit whisper to me, uh, Isaiah 61. And I began praying into that. So then uh, we get to uh, California and just hearing the testimonies of these men in the Dream Center. Um, it oh, just, did you, they served the Barnett. Yep. Oh, beautiful. Thank yep. you, Lord. I yep. knew that. Yep. Hearing these testimonies, it, God was just preparing my heart for what was to come. Um, fast forward, the last day, we go to Santa Monica um, to preach the gospel to people that were just shopping. And then uh, I came across this lady. Um, she was a cleaning lady. And um, I go up to her and I, and I say, hey, I don't, I don't mean to bother you. And she's like, I don't speak any English. And so I was talking to her in Spanish. You're like, perfect, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm from Orlando. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she had no way out. <laughs> no way out, yeah. <laughs> yeah she, and so uh, um, she, she turns around and I say, hey, I was praying this morning and I was asking the Lord to highlight somebody that he wanted me to speak to. And, and she turns around and she says, me? And I said, yeah, you. And I, said, and I just told her how much Jesus loves her and I said, have you ever heard of Jesus? And she said, no, never. And I said, you've never heard of Jesus? You've never heard the gospel? And she said, no. And then I shared the gospel with her and the way that she was looking at me was if her eyes were like, please, somebody save me, somebody save me. And wow. I shared the gospel wow. with her, she was saved. Thank you, then, Lord, come yeah. on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh. And so we get, we, get, we, we get back together with the group and uh, we were about to eat and I go to Josh, one of my leaders, and I say, Josh, I just, I just feel like I'm supposed to just spend time with the Lord and give this back to the Lord. It's something that you teach us when uh, people give their lives to Christ, we should offer it back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't hungry and I, and I just stayed back and um, I, the moment I sat on this chair, um, I started going through the dream and I realized that I was living the dream that, uh, that I had prior to coming to California. And I started reading through Isaiah 61 and it was like, it was like the Lord had just appeared to me there and he reached down in my heart and, was, and it was like he grabbed my heart and was going like this around my heart and I just felt the compassion of the Lord for the lost. And for an hour and a half straight, I just kept going through Isaiah 61, Isaiah 61, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. And um, this you, encounter lasted for, I would say, five hours. And it's still lingering in there, and um, my life will really never be the same. I have compassion for the lost again, and... Um, I just, it's such an honor to serve, to serve here and to sit under you and it's an honor to go to, to California. And Come yeah, on, so. thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So beautiful. So beautiful. Wow. Can we, um, we're going to do two more tonight. Could we kill the lights? And we've, our team made just a very quick recap of, of, of the mission's outreach last week that really, man, so beautiful. Let's go ahead and run that. And if you're faithful in proclaiming the gospel, I don't care how bad a preacher you are, if you're faithful in proclaiming the gospel, the Holy Spirit is going to use it because it's the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. And you don't have to water it down and dilute it and try to be relevant. 
The day for relevance is finished. She got saved, she gave her life to Jesus. Got the privilege to lead two young men to the Lord. I just went up to him, preached the gospel to him. I said, would you like to receive Jesus in your heart? He said, yeah. She literally said, like, I don't usually ever think about religion, but this morning I was reading this. He allowed me to preach the full gospel to her. The Lord really started convicting him and uh, ended up going down on his knees and just surrendering. And Two of them gave their life to the Lord. And when we prayed for her, she took the brace off and the pain was gone. He gave his life back to the Lord again. We got to pray for her and she wanted to rededicate her life to Jesus. And we shared the gospel with her and she surrendered her life to Jesus. No pain? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's Jesus Christ. So when I passed by, he asked me for a cone because he was dealing with his hair. So I said to him, I don't have a cone, but I have Jesus. And then he ended up giving his life to Jesus. That past week leading up to this week, I had chronic back pain. And I lost all my discs in my L4s and L5s. And I can tell you today that the Lord has completely healed my back. I couldn't bend my back past this point. Now, I can touch my toes without pain. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. It costs much, but it's worth the cost. It costs everything. If you really want to know the price, if you really want to know the price, I'll tell you, it'll cost you everything. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Father. Isn't he wonderful? Wow. God bless all of you who went. And, and then we had a team stay local. Is that right, Ryan? And what did they do? They did food banks, schools, hospitals. Preached the gospel all over Orlando. Oh, that's, that's Jesus, guys. Come on, give the Lord praise one more time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Um, two quick announcements. Uh, number one, uh, Jesus 24 is getting close. I mean, my word. So go ahead, and if you're watching, I just got a text last night of a massive group of pastors coming in from Australia. There are people that are coming in from all over the world to be in the Lord's presence. So... If you have not registered, am I right, baby? I, I don't want to get the numbers wrong, but are we about? Is that right, Carla? When I checked last, yeah, about a thousand. <laughs> That's why we have Carla. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, okay, I won't give numbers. <laughs> Just for the, I don't want to get them wrong. But we are well, well, well ahead of uh, where we were last year, this far out for Jesus 23. And that place was packed. Uh, the arena is going to be filled with the presence of God. We're going to worship Jesus, and the gospel will be declared, and the power of the Holy Spirit will move. So if you've not registered yet, you want to be there, you need to very quickly. Amen? Amen. Okay, tonight is going to be a very special night of worship. And uh, what I'm sensing from the Lord is that we're going to worship for a very long time tonight. And that is to sign up to be in God's presence. That's the way that works. So if you're hungry for the Lord, I would not miss tonight's service for anything. I would get here. 
I would get here and come worship Jesus. And by the way, how many of you were not here last Sunday? Okay, good. Look at the consistency. God bless you. Not many. But we have our permit to build, and I know most of you already know, but why don't we thank the Lord one more time? Thank you, Father. So that's awesome. Thank you, Lord. So, what amazing news. The Lord answers prayer. And imagine that we still are trying to figure that out. <laughs> He's like, I've been telling you that for 34 years, Michael. Take your Bibles to Matthew 5. We're going to continue through the Beatitudes. Anyone visiting this morning uh, from a different nation? Look at, yeah, where are you from back there? Sorry, say that again, please. England. Switzerland. Spain. <laughs> Loose, okay. <laughs> Welcome, God bless you. What an honor. Anybody else over there from a different nation on this side? Yes, where are you from? Canada. Canada. Welcome. Good to have you here from Michigan. No, it's just a joke, it's a joke, it's a joke. Yes, where are you from? Sri Lanka, God bless you. Yes. Dominican Republic. I want to go there. I've never been there. Yeah. Anyone else here in the middle? Yes. Switzerland. Aren't we blessed to have a, a place where the nations are coming to be in the Lord's presence? Anybody in the balcony, sometimes you get left out. Anybody up there from a different nation, you've come to be in the Lord's presence? Oh, one here? Yes. Canada? God bless you. Welcome. Anybody here? Yes. Canada. Yeah. Yes. Haiti. Haiti. God bless you. Welcome. Yes, anyone here? Anyone on this side? No, these are all locals. Okay. <laughs> Anybody up there? Yes. Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Wow. Beautiful. Good fishing there. Yes. Brazil. Brazil. I felt a little fire up there. <laughs> Guys, can we welcome the nations to the Lord's house? Honored to have you all. God bless you. God bless you. All right, take your Bibles to Matthew 5, please. We've been in the Beatitudes now for about four weeks. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, you are a teacher. Precious Lord, show us your beauty. Open our hearts, prepare us for Holy Communion. Speak to us as you've promised to. You said, my sheep know my voice, a stranger they will not follow. Protect us in these last days from all strangers. And let us follow the good and faithful shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew 5, verse 7. I did my vocal warm-ups today, so I will do all the reading. I hope my vocal coach is watching and knows that I'm being responsible. <laughs> Matthew 5, verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Our team just got back from uh, Georgia, and sometimes I have to remember where we got back from. And I got back yesterday. The team got back last night. We were with Brian up at his church in Atlanta. It was wonderful. And uh, so good to see what the Lord is doing there. And I actually preached some of the Beatitudes message there on Saturday night or Friday night. As a quick review, I, what I would love for us to understand, maybe it's an aspect of the Beatitudes that maybe you've never seen before, is that they flow into one another. And they speak of, yes, a future experience, but also a present experience. Okay. So when we speak of the kingdom, remember, uh, the kingdom of God was, is, and is to come. 
So the kingdom of God deals with our past. The kingdom of God is a present experience. And the kingdom of God will be. Hallelujah. Amen? So it's like this. You were saved. This is just one example. You were saved at your conversion. You are being saved now. Right? You are being formed into the image of Jesus. And when you receive your glorified body at the resurrection, you will be saved. Uh, so the kingdom is not bound to time. Hallelujah. I was telling my son the other day, uh, Benny, he, he loves to come. <laughs> I'll be in bed and he'll want to debate me on theology. <laughs> like I'm literally just falling asleep. He'll go, what do you think of this statement by this fourth century church father? And I'll go, I don't care. I'm watching golf channel <laughs> because I know what he's trying to do he's coming to rile me up and he'll, he'll say things that he doesn't even believe just to stir me up you know I go Benny get out of here with that you know what I'm going to say well no 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 let's be responsible he'll say theologically let's move through this okay but one of the things I was telling him about the other day was that the Lord Jesus does not live in eternity. Eternity lives within the Lord Jesus. So God is bound by nothing but his word. And he is his word. He is the word. Okay. So when you look at the Beatitudes, I want you to think of them as a living experience that, that, that you progress in and never really escape. And that's a wonderful thing. And that we see here an invitation into being formed into the image of Jesus. Which is, according to Romans chapter 8, the goal of God. All right? And it's, un it's important if you're going to win at this thing that you can define the win. Because if you don't define the win quickly and clearly, you may give your life for inferior reasons, or for inferior issues, I should say. To inferior issues. To what is peripheral. To what is supplemental. And if we don't define the win, we actually lose vision and understanding for the journey and for challenge. God loves us too much to allow us to not be challenged. <laughs> there are two beatitudes that, are, that, that, that release the promise of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. One is being poor in spirit. The other is persecution. There are promises. As much a promise is sowing and reaping. No, you don't. I know you don't like that. It's Sunday morning, Pastor. Don't go there. <laughs> I want you to understand what the win is. Because once that's defined, perseverance hits your soul. Steadiness hits your soul. An understanding of the age to come. We actually need our hearts anchored in the age to come. Paul, for instance, tells the church who's divided, in other words, what's wrong with you? Don't you know you'll judge angels one day? You're arguing at the church fish fry? You're still divided? You're arguing over money and food? And don't, come on, he's saying, snap out of it. Don't you know? You'll judge angels? He's begging them to step into Christian maturity with the age to come as an anchor in the soul. So what is this goal? I don't even need you to turn there. It's quite simple. That we be formed into the image of the Lord Jesus. That's what Paul tells the Roman church. This is the goal. This is the goal before filling a stadium is the goal.
if this is the ultimate goal, and God tells me to do an arena event at Jesus 24, that arena event is unto the formation, not the opposite. Now this will give you vision next time you have to have, for example, a Matthew 18 conversation with someone. It's uncomfortable. And you don't want to confront somebody who hurt you. It's bigger than the moment. It's actually about your formation, which is connected to the age to come. It makes the conversation look this big. Do you get it? So when we look at the Beatitudes, we see this continual flow that is meant to form us into the image of Jesus, which is bridled by nature. It's a bridal issue. I've said that so many times here. The Lord is looking for a bride with his nature. And the Bible teaches that we are partakers of the divine nature, Peter writes, according to the precious promises of God. Never devalue praying through scripture. There's a nature exchange. And it's important. At times, and we, 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 we should remember the kingdom was, is, and is to come. When we are focused on a now kingdom alone, we lose our grip oftentimes on purity because we are not thinking of the age to come. Uh, in the West, grace can mean a like grace can be looked at as like a giant sin eraser. Grace is just to remove all my stain, and that is an element of grace. But in biblical culture, grace speaks of the divine empowerment of the Spirit. So Jesus grew in grace. Certainly he did not grow in the forgiveness of sin. He had none, right? Right? So when we speak of the grace of God, God's ultimate ambition for that grace in our lives is to make us look like Jesus. When we lose the revelation and the truth that we will all give an account, and Paul is speaking of the church there, the judgment seat of Christ is for the church. We will give an account, he tells the Corinthians. And he speaks of our works. This is so important. He speaks of our works as belonging to two different categories. Wood, hay, and stubble. Category one. Category two. Silver, gold, precious stone. And then he gives the picture that on that day, that belongs to the church, by the way, on that day, our works will pass through fire to reveal the category of our works. Now, we are not saved by works because Paul goes on to say, you'll still be saved if your works burn. <laughs> but he basically says, by the hair on your chinny chin chin, <laughs> the white ones, like I have. Nonetheless, the Christian's works will be audited. Big deal. That's a big one. How many of you love tax season right now? Everyone I call right now, what are you doing? My taxes. I think I called David the other day. I go, what are you doing? It's a beautiful day out. I said, what are you doing? He goes, taxes. Aren't you glad to be doing it when it's 72 degrees out? No humidity? No, this is horrible. Okay. When our money is audited, it is looked at methodically. It is categorized. It should be done with the utmost integrity, knowing that the Lord is watching. You know he is watching your tax return, by the way. If you cannot steward natural treasure, Jesus says, you cannot steward heavenly treasure. I love what David said. How many verses deal with possessions? 2,000 years. Over 2,000 deal with our possessions. That, that is a preparation for the age to come. 
So when we lose the understanding of that moment where our works will pass through holy fire, we actually relieve ourselves of the beautiful invitation, are you ready for this word? Into holiness. Holiness matters. Don't confuse holiness with religion. Don't confuse holiness with legalism. At the same time, please don't confuse a hellish lifestyle with God's grace. Don't do that either. So Paul had this understanding that all he accomplished would be tested by fire at the throne. And the ATM code that would reveal the quality of the works was one thing. Purity of motive. It's why I'm grateful for the ability to broadcast to the world what the Lord's doing here. But part of me sometimes wishes social media were not even a thing. It's like a great blessing and then it's great burden at the same time because when when we live for people's approval motive is assaulted when our self-worth is attached to somebody's click or like purity is at stake so Paul understood that based on motive this, this would reveal the quality of his works. And he is talking about his ministry. Not his life prior. He's speaking about post road to Damascus encounter. The quality of his work. And the purity of his work. So the Beatitudes are meant to carry us and reveal the Magna Carta of the Lord's heart and his ways and his nature. They are an invitation into the heart of Jesus, who is the ultimate lawgiver. I said the ultimate lawgiver, who is giving the Beatitudes, as I said a couple weeks ago, sitting on a hill. And this is what kings do. And he's telling Israel, I am the fulfillment of what Moses preached and embodied as the one who went up a hill to bring back the law, I am the greater prophet than Moses, the prophet that Moses spoke of. This law doesn't demolish Moses' law, but it's a higher law. And that's why Jesus never said, thus saith the Lord, because he is the Lord. He didn't have to. So as we, I'm just very quickly go through this, as we experience being poor in spirit, which is, which is utter dependency upon God, the kingdom of heaven is ours. In other words, we step into a lifestyle that is Christianity, a lifestyle of discipleship. The kingdom is at hand, as, as, as the gospel of Mark says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then we move into this morning over the understanding that our sin sent Jesus to the cross it is not a small issue. It's meant to be mourned of. And if we mourn properly with the Lord, he sends the Holy Spirit to comfort us and deliver us from the power of sin. You do not have to live as a slave to sin. It's not a Christian promise. It's the promise of the world. Then we step into this meekness because once you've been comforted by the Spirit, because you've mourned over your own sin... You're less likely to spend your life pointing out everybody else's sin, which softens you. So if you're going through something this morning, I would imagine by the size of this crowd today that somebody's going through something. No? Anyone? All right. Perhaps you should ask the Lord, what are you teaching me in this? Oh, how I miss Joy Dawson. I'd be, go, I'd, be, I'd be complaining to her. She was 90 years old. Joy, they said this. They're doing this. I don't know what to do. Darling boy from New Zealand. That little Kiwi accent. Darling boy, what's God teaching you? 
I said, I don't care what he's teaching me. I need you to tell me how bad those people are. That's all I care about. What's he teaching you? And while God may not be the author of a challenge at times, sometimes he is, depending on what it is, he can still teach you and turn everything for the good in the midst of a challenge, even if he doesn't send it. He's big enough to do that. Meekness is a treasure. And now we know that the meek inherit the earth. God trusts meek people to do mighty things. Moses, for instance. Moses is meek enough to write in scripture that he is the meekest man on earth. <laughs> You've got to be pretty blind to your own meekness to write that about you. are like, well, it's, I'm the meekest man I know. <laughs> on earth, by the way. And he's trusted with a nation in the house of God because of his humble and meek heart. Amen? Then we move into this hunger for righteousness. In other words, the rightness of Christ Jesus that is not earned but given. It's imputed. Jesus gives us his righteousness. Isn't that wonderful? And then that righteousness positionally strengthens us to live righteously. We don't live righteously in our own strength. And I'm grateful for that. And, and, and I'd also like to say, for those of us who love spiritual warfare, for instance, the greatest form of warfare is to live in the presence of Jesus and love him. You don't want to war in your own strength. You want him to fill you with his grace and you'll discover, for instance, if you're struggling with a sin cycle in your life, which one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm so concerned about in the church is, yes, yes, I agree that, we need, that people need to be held to a standard. The church needs holy, holy parishioners, and yes, it needs holy leaders. That is a fact. And we need to do better at stewarding our hearts. We need to be better with church discipline, and how that works out. At the same time, we also as leaders need to give people, the sheep, space to be human and to show their humanity. You know, I grew up in a tradition in the Orthodox Church where you actually went to confession. I don't want to get into the doctrine of all that. Please do not send me a, a message about it. Okay. However, whether you agree with that pattern or not, at least the sacrament and the beauty of confession was part of the culture of the church. Rather than hiding it and being a leader who can find no help. It's actually part of Christian culture for 2,000 years to confess your sins. I heard a priest say once, many people who come to me for confession confess everyone else's sins. <laughs> but meekness sounds like that. It's, it's, it's aware of our own our own journey in God that we're being formed even now into the image of Jesus. We need righteousness, the righteousness of God and God promises that we'll be filled. I taught on that last week that Jesus is food and drink. Now I'd like to move into this merciful aspect. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Does anyone here think they need mercy now and mercy when they face the Lord? Anyone want it? Okay, who doesn't want any? All right. You can invest into your mercy account now by showing mercy. Now, the word or the promise isn't really, I mean, what part of the promise here is the mercy we receive but every beatitude begins with this word, blessed. 
Blessed now and blessed you will be. That comes from the Greek word makarios. And the Greek word makarios, listen to this, means supremely blessed, fortunate, well off, happy. Anybody want that? Anybody want the joy of the Lord? Notice each beatitude begins with that word. It is a heart posture and a reality that belongs to those who live according to this ethos. The word makarios or blessed in Greek is actually, this is wild, is actually connected to the Lord himself. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Can we put that on the screen? I'm going to read a, 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 another, another version, actually. Just give me one second. One moment. Look at the, you know, the, the ESV. It's actually, uh, in, what verse did I give you? Oh, sorry, I meant 11. Go to verse 11 of, of ESV, though. Listen to this language. In accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. That word blessed there is the Greek word makarios. So what God is actually inviting us into via the Beatitudes is his own presence. The word makario speaks of the blessed God. Again, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 13 through 16, if we could put that up. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus, the, before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ's appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is, listen to this language, the blessed that Greek word is makarios, the same word in the Beatitudes. The blessed and only pontificate, or king of kings, ultimate ruler, the most majestic one, Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man can, has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. So the blessedness of the Beatitudes speaks of God's presence himself. This is amazing. And mercy is a massive aspect of the Lord's nature. Micah 6, verse 8. Would you turn there? Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? We're not only to be merciful, we are to love the thought of showing mercy. We are to love it because God is merciful. How many of you know that? How many of you would say God has been merciful to you in your Christian testimony? Yes. All right. 
I remember getting saved here. I remember getting healed here, right here in this building as a little boy. I didn't sign up for it. I just, my mom dragged me in here. It was mercy. Did you know the gospel was not man's idea? The gospel is God's idea. Did you know salvation is God's idea? Man did not invent that. That's from the Lord. So we are to love mercy. Look at this, Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 7. But God, I'll just read the beginning of verse 4 here. But God, who is rich in mercy, that means he's got a lot of it. Therefore, his children should be rich in mercy. Why? Why is he rich in mercy? Paul tells us here, because of his great love. So those who love God and people should be rich in mercy. With which he loved us. Listen to this. Even when we were dead in trespasses. Did you know God loved you before you got saved? Made us alive together. Now he begins to spell out how this mercy flushes out. He loved us. I was dead in trespasses. In other words, I'm alive now. Made us alive together with Christ. He goes on to say that he's raised us up together. We were buried with Christ. We've been raised up with Christ. And you know what else he's done? This is wild. Because right now you're sitting on old blue, blue fabric on an old church pew. This makes no sense to us right now in the natural. And has made us to sit together in the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Why? Because he's merciful. It gets better. That in the ages to come, you know, right now we're living in one age. There are ages ahead. In the ancient church, they would say this. They still say it in many of the old church liturgies. And unto the ages of ages, amen. Speaking of the glory of God, when they speak of the character of God, they will finish that statement with, and unto the ages of ages, amen. The Bible says here that in the ages to come, God will show the exceeding riches of his grace in us and in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. You went from being dead in trespasses to God displaying his grace through you in the ages to come. Now the third chapter of Ephesians teaches us that the angels learn of the nature of God through God's dealings with the church. God has taken us as his church and chosen to display who he is, not just now, in the ages to come, before every prince and power and ruler and throne and dominion, God will express his goodness through his church that he will glorify in him for ages upon ages upon ages upon ages. That is mercy. You go from being dead and an enemy of God to that. That's what mercy looks like. I think we should thank the Lord. Now, Paul writes, give me, give me eight, nine more minutes. Paul writes in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly, boldly to what? The throne of grace. Why? That we may obtain mercy. Mercy. So the writer of Hebrews, as you've heard many times here, teaches that we don't approach an earthly Zion. That we approach a heavenly Zion, a heavenly city, the church of the firstborn where innumerable saints and angels gather. In other words, the writer of Hebrews is trying to teach the church, and I wish we could get there, and I believe we will, 
that when the church gathers to worship Jesus on earth, it is not a separate worship service. We approach one throne, one hill. And by the Spirit, we join innumerable angels, the seraphs, the cherubim. Isn't that amazing? I, 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 I want us as a church to have that reality deep within us. That we're not here to attend to mark off some duty. That when we walk through these doors, the moment we begin to thank the Lord, this is how you should come into God's presence. According to Matthew 18, I am here in your name. And because I'm here in your name, you said if two or three would gather, you would be there in the midst of us. I come here in your name, Jesus. I'm not coming to come to Jesus' image. I'm coming to come to Jesus. I'm coming in and I, I begin to prepare my heart and I begin to thank the Lord for his goodness. And the moment the Holy Spirit begins to move, and that awareness is taking root in our hearts, we join the heavens. That's wild. We join the heavens to worship the Lord. That's why in the ancient, ancient churches, you don't see them being very tall. That happened later in the church. They, begin to, they began to build buildings that reached up as high as possible. And they were still pretty big. But if you look at the domes of the early churches, you would see paintings on the roof because they're trying to communicate to the people. You'd see paintings of angels, paintings of the dove flying down. You'd see paintings of, of, of different elders in the church. What they are trying to tell the church is that this is one worship service, that we're approaching a heavenly Zion. Yeah, it's incredible. So we approach this throne of grace, and when we come and approach... This Lord in our worship, we obtain mercy. Aren't you grateful? Yes. He pours out his mercy. And we find grace, the scripture says in verse 16, to help in the time of need. That's why it's so vital we never forsake the value for gathering. There's a measure of presence available in the gathering that just doesn't exist when we don't gather. Your grace becomes my grace. Your strength becomes my strength. And Jesus loves it when we gather. That's why our heart should break over the division in the church. It breaks my heart to see how quickly we attack people. Even in good, even, even in moments where correction needs to happen or Somebody may, may have a, a good heart. The method, the method is off. It's not working. It's further dividing. And division, the reason Paul says deal with it is because, listen carefully, it is the antithesis of Trinity community in heaven. Three in one. Jesus said the, the Son of Man can do nothing by himself. He's showing us the culture of his heart. And when he prays to the Father, he says, glorify me with the same glory I had in ages past. And then he prays that we would be one. He uses the framework of his relationship with his Father to pray for us. You're wondering what unity looks like? There, he sets the standard and teaches us the heart of the Trinity. Amen? So we find grace. And we need grace, guys. We need, our, we need the strength of God. Psalm 51, verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Here we see that the mercy of God is tender. Now you see that connection to meekness, which means to be soft and supple. We need tenderness again. Why is the church so mean? Even if they're right topically, the meanness is not from God. The abrasiveness is not from God. The mercies of God are tender. Lamentations 3:22 through 23. Listen to this. 
3, 22 through 23. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Do, do you know what keeps us from being fried like a moth in a flame? Mercy. Yes. <laughs> not us. It's mercy. We are not consumed by the holiness of God because of his mercy. Look, look what the rest of that verse says. Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God has been faithful to show us mercies that are new every morning. How many of you were freaked out by that eclipse recently? It should have, because that's not like a bird flying by. It's pretty wild. It's pretty amazing. All right. You know the Lord uses the sun multiple times in his own ministry to teach us about his ways? The apocalypse or the book of Revelation mentions the sun many times. But one of the things Paul tells us, or I should say the gospels teach us, is this. Do not allow your anger to remain through the setting of the sun. Now that doesn't mean you have to work every issue out. But this is what this means. Get with God and figure out a way to not be angry by the time the sun goes down. Isn't that merciful of the Lord? He actually gives us an alarm to deal with our anger, it's called the setting of the sun. So daily the Lord is saying, deal with it. Get that anger out, don't go to sleep with it. Deal with it, call that person, text that person, pray for them, for whatever you need to do. Don't carry that beyond the setting of the sun. It's cancerous to the soul. Why? Because he's wanting to wake you up when the sun rises with mercy. Doesn't want you to carry anger through the setting of the sun because he has a plan for you when your eyes open. He wants to pour his mercy out on you. And they are new every morning. Hallelujah. Last verse. The Lord is merciful. Now we speak of who, who he is, his character. You want to know what God is like? Psalm 103 verse 8. The Lord is merciful. Say, Lord, make me merciful. Because you are merciful. What's that look like? He's gracious. He's slow to anger. And then he repeats himself. Abounding in mercy. Two times in one verse. In other words, he's not just merciful, like, like, like is described at the beginning of the verse. He abounds in the mercy. Now, before we receive Holy Communion, there is a counterfeit mercy as well that relinquishes Christian responsibility. It's an unsanctified mercy. Don't misunderstand or, or confuse me telling you to be merciful well, let me say it another way. Being merciful and trusting are not one and the same. Because Psalm 97, 2, don't turn there, says righteousness and justice are the foundations of God's throne. So God is not blind. However, don't confuse justice with your right to punish those who've hurt you. You don't have that right. There is a way to regain trust with people and God. And I'll teach on that next week. But for the sake of your notes, you have to acknowledge, confess, make restitution, and repent. Acknowledge, confess, make restitution, and repent. This is where our circles 
mess up. They call it legalism. If Jesus said it, it's not legalism. Zacchaeus said, I'm going to go make this right. Jesus said, ah, the kingdom is here. It's close to you. In John, chap- don't turn. In John chapter 2, listen to this. Many believed in his name when they saw his signs, but Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in them. In other words, he healed them, touched them, cast devils out of them, raised the dead, but he won friends with all of them. Don't mistake his salvific work with intimacy and friendship. He is looking for character if he's going to share his secrets with you. Basically what this verse is saying is he didn't give himself away to everybody. He healed them. He touched them. He preached to them. And he didn't need anyone to coach him regarding what people are like because he made them. I I want us to be a trusted people by Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Ludi, very softly. But I want to I want to say we are about to enter the fall of 2024, which is an election year. The church is going to be tested in this area. And I can't speak for every other church. I just know where I want our church to land. It does God no good when his church becomes hateful. Imagine if God could actually accomplish something via mercy. I want to get in front of it as a pastor now. I don't want a single, I do not want to be divided here. deeper than blood certainly deeper than skin color demographics you know what we're connected by the blood of Jesus the person of the Holy Spirit if I'm going to get in front of anything as a pastor it's going to be division so, so, so let's keep in mind the season that's about to come remember invest in your mercy account your motives are going to go through fire Build the account. Now at the same time, don't bring people too close that you don't trust. That's how chaos sets in. There's balance to it all. You don't, you don't have to just have everyone over at the house. Friendship and mercy are not the same. But I want us to be merciful people. Okay, here's the challenge. Are you ready? I'm going to pull a Joy Dawson on you. Oh, this is going to be good. I want you to think of three people that you don't feel like showing mercy to and type their name into your phone right now or write it down if you're taking notes. And I want you to tell the Lord today in his presence that, by the way, he's listening. He's here. That you will to the best of your own ability and ask for his grace to show mercy toward them. You are not the punisher and you don't have time to be. It doesn't feel good to be that. Vindication belongs to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Write those down. Go ahead. Why would I teach on this without giving you an opportunity to obey it? Mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. It feels wonderful to forgive. It feels horrible to hold on to stuff. Now with every head bowed and eye closed, as we prepare to receive communion, I'm not going to call you forward today. I usually do. But every once in a while it just feels a little... A different flow of the Spirit. (laughs) 
Yeah, the communion teams can go. Everyone else, I'd like you to remain still. If while I was preaching, you felt like you first needed mercy from God, with every head bowed and eye closed, you say, Michael, I need mercy. There's a lot of sin piled up between me and God. I need that to go. I need mercy. I'm really sorry for that sin. I, I want to be washed clean. I, I don't want my own sin to be what God sees. I want you to lift your hand right now with every head bowed and eye closed. Yo, so many of you. Okay. I'd like us to all stand, please. Thank you. Let's pray. If you raised your hand or wish you did, in fact, we can all pray it this morning as, as a family. Let's lift our hands to heaven, to our God who is merciful. Can, we, can, we, can you just repeat after me? Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy shown in Jesus Christ who bled and died and was raised again and is seated at the right hand of the Father who shall return in glory to judge the living and the dead because of your great mercy Forgive my sin. Wash me and cleanse me. I repent of anything I've done. I repent of my sin. I renounce it. Renounce the enemy and his ways and the ways of this world. And I give all my trust all my affection to the mercy and grace of God cleanse me precious father in Jesus name amen would the communion elements please come yeah we can give the Lord praise thank you Jesus for your mercy isn't he wonderful now in a moment uh, as the ushers come forward uh, you, we will receive communion. The way we receive communion here at Jesus Image is uh, your rose will be dismissed and you'll come forward and you'll take the elements back to your seat. And I'm going to ask that you receive it with somebody in prayer and in agreement. And come believing the Lord to heal your body during communion. If you are sick in body, I know many of you were he healed earlier. Thank the Lord. I did feel a very sweet healing anointing this morning that kind of took me by surprise the way it all happened I believe that's still flowing today and so come to this meal that is the meal of deliverance the meal of healing in faith and as you as you approach the elements approach it with the presence of God in mind with a real sobriety and a joy that we've been called to the table of the Lord so you'll go back to your seat receive it there with someone and if you're by yourself don't be shy. Ask somebody if you can receive with them. And if you happen to see someone alone, just invite them to receive communion with you. Uh, Nico, may I have uh, the elements, please? I just want to pray. Thank you. Can we lift our hands to heaven? Holy Father, this is your meal, the supper that flows from your precious heart to be one with us. And so Lord, as I lift these gifts that you've given us, I ask that the wonderful power of the Holy Spirit would come upon them and that we would know your glory and your touch. Prepare us, Lord, to receive this incredible holy meal by which you are our food and our drink. Be our bread and be the fruit of the vine, Lord, that flows through our veins. Be our life. Protect us, seal us, deliver us. Feed us, Lord, with your goodness and your grace. Strengthen your people, your church, your saints. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Can we give the Lord praise? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated. The ushers will dismiss your rows. The worship team will minister to the Lord. Once you're done receiving communion, you're welcome to sit for a few minutes or, or go. We will see you tonight. God bless you.
We believe that the nations will descend on this land. That the sick will be healed here. That the lost will be saved here. That the presence of the glory of God will rest here. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. That the mountains might shake at your presence. That the gospel will go forth from here. Shaking the earth for the glory of God. That the presence of Jesus Christ would dwell among us. Here we will enter into the peace of your presence. Here we will remain. Jesus said, remain in me and I in you. Here we will remain. This is holy ground. Where only one thing is needed, Jesus. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped here. May his word be taught in clarity and love here as we tell the generations to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works He has done. May the generations come to find Him here. To find Jesus here. Here. Together we will build the house of God. And a home for His people.